Good morning soldiers, today I want to talk about the rifle bayonet. What impact it has had on the battlefield in the past and if it's still relevant in today's battlefield. It's still one of the most prominent memories that I have from basic training. Standing in this lush green field, just sweat beating down my forehead. I had a rifle in my hand with a bayonet attached to the end. We were standing at attention with the drill sergeants walking back and forth, and they would just ask you one question. What makes the green grass grow? And your answer would be blood, blood, bright red blood. And then you'd stab this dummy that was in front of you with your bayonet and just do it over and over. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, when, when am I ever going to do this in real life? You know, let, even though I was a non-combat MOS, when am I ever going to fix a bayonet onto my M16 and go at the enemy? And after doing it, like, for like a couple hours straight, blood, blood, bright red blood, you start to notice the psychological effect that bayonets have, both for the aggressor and for the defender. And it's something that you cannot ignore. It's something you cannot dismiss, even on the modern battlefield. Bayonets scare the shit out of people. I mean, it's, imagine getting shot. I mean, which one would you rather have? Would you rather get shot or stabbed with a bayonet? Or just stabbed in general? And most people would say, I'd rather get shot. It's quick. It's over in a second. You know, and a lot of times it heals a lot quicker and a lot easier. It's a lot easier to treat than a knife wound. I mean, just imagine when, when, when you get stabbed with a knife, it's not over. They could wiggle that shit around, you know, and just go up, go down. And if they stab you in the gut, they could just go all the way up. Boom, there goes your guts all over the, uh, all over the ground. And it's just the psychological uh, effect of, of being stabbed. To use the movie uh, Saving Private Ryan as a really good example, like how many people got shot in that movie? Can you, can you count on one hand? You know, like, no, a lot of people got shot in that movie. And you can't remember every single one. It's like, boom, he gets shot, boom, he gets shot. But do you remember the guy that got stabbed? You know what I'm talking about. When they were wrestling around inside of that city and the knife was slowly going in his chest, like how much of a psychological impact did you have on that? I don't know about you, but that shit stuck with me. Like that, I used that as motivation to work out. I would just like have that scene in my head as I was doing bench presses and I'm like, no, mm -mm, not gonna happen to me. I mean, fuck man, that, that stuck with me. And that's what I'm talking about with bayonets. I mean, just, just Google something called the bayonet charge. And it's going to bring up all these battles that, uh, that have happened in which the bayonet charge have changed the tide of who was going to win that. Uh, because as hard as it is to accept, some people, at some point when you're on the battlefield, you, you learn to be okay with the concept of getting shot, possibly dying from getting shot. Like I said, it's quick, it's easy, you hope it's quick. You know, but you don't really know. But not many people are okay with the idea of getting stabbed with a bayonet. It's not quick. It's not easy. And it's going to be slow and painful. During the Korean War, there was this, there was this battle going on in which the uh, North Koreans had this, this uh, machine gun encampment going on. You know, and it was stopping any forward progress from our infantry. And there was an officer named Lewis L. Millet who conducted a bayonet charge against a machine gun encampment, and it turned that battle around. Those people in those machine guns, you know, they were able to take out a few of our soldiers, but they saw people charging with those bayonets, and they were like, fuck this. And they pieced out of those positions, and we actually turned that into our favor. Now, that was the last bayonet charge by the United States Army, but we've seen it more recently. And this is where I give props to the British military, because they do it the most, from what I've read. And they've done it more recently than you would ever expect. I think 2011 was the last uh, bayonet charge by someone in the British military. And the reason that I give props to it, the reason that I, I find it so respectable, is because usually bayonets do not have a place on the modern, bottle, modern battlefield on a regular basis. I mean, with... with the ammo capacity that weapons have now, their, their effectiveness in close quarters, we, we don't now have these super long rifles. You know, we have, we have carbines and we have SMGs and pistols and all these things that make us extremely effective in close quarters without a bayonet. So the only reason that you would use it is A, you're completely out of ammo, which means, you know, you, you've been in the shit. If you're completely out of ammo, your basic carrying load gives you more than enough to handle your average engagement. So that means you've been engaged for quite a while, so you deserve some respect for that in general. To fix that bayonet and still go at the enemy knowing that you don't have any ammo, that's respectable in my opinion. And two, for the psychological effect of a bayonet. 
And, and that, that to me is just like, whoa, man. I, I cannot imagine being in a unit and that commander saying, fix bayonets, guys. We're going to go fuck these guys up. We're going to show them what we're made of. And just go in there and just charge and bayonet the shit out of some people like that. That is something that you don't see. And that is something that if you were the enemy and you saw it, you'd be like, ah, I'm out of here. I'm done. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. These guys are obviously out for blood and out of their fucking mind. So does a bayonet really have a place in today's battlefield? I think yes. I think it does, but not in the way that we've been engaged lately. You know, with, with Al-Qaeda and Taliban and all these guerrilla tactics with IEDs and these little skirmishes here and there of getting ambushed. You know, no. There's no entrenched enemy there. There's no encampment that we need to instill that psychological effect on. And there certainly aren't as many battles in which you would completely run out of ammo and have the bayonet as your last resort. Now, as far as gaming, the last time I think... Honestly, the last game that I've played in which we've seen a bayonet is what you see right here, Ward at War. And I thought it was so much fun. I mean, getting that M1 Grand and putting the bayonet on the end and charging at the enemy, man, was it effective? You know, not really. But was it fun? You bet your ass. And I think it's something that we can put in, in some more games that we see today, even if it is based on modern combat. You know, let me put in Battlefield 3 a bayonet on, on the end of some of my rifles. And let me do some front takedowns. That's what I think would be the place for it. Now, you'd see significantly less accuracy because of that bayonet. But I think it would be really cool if it allowed you to do front takedowns. I don't think it would be too overpowered because the front takedown would take more time. And, you know, you'd be incapacitated during that time in which the enemy could just turn around and shoot you in the face. Uh, but it would have this psychological effect on people. You know, if they were really entrenched and they had people charging at them, with the bayonet, knowing that they'd get that one hit kill if they try to stab them from the front, I think it'd be something pretty cool. I think it'd be even cooler if you could take that bayonet off. You know, it'd take up an attachment or something like that. You know, make it take up, uh, replace the, the, the front rail attachment so the heavy barrel, the silencer, whatever, you'd have the bayonet in place of that, but it's something you could take on and off. I think that'd be really awesome, really fun, really cool. Uh, and if not used in that capacity, used in some other capacity. Because the bayonet is something that does have a psychological effect. It does have a place on the modern battlefield. Does it have a huge place? No. You know, is it one of those strategies that you're going to see on a regular basis? No. But that's what makes it so much more effective, so much more impactful on the mind of the enemy when it is used. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Is this something that we should see in modern combat games. In Call of Duty, you know, the last time we saw it was War at War. And since then, we've seen a lot of controversy when it comes to stabbing and knifing in the game. And I think the last, the last thing people want to see is another way for people to overpower that whole aspect of the game. In Battlefield, you got a lot of people who don't like that one, that one hit takedown thing with the knife, you know? You got a lot of people that love it. So what do you think? Should this be something that we see in either series? Um, and if it is, how would you like to see it? But that's all I have for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Sergeant Merrill, out here.